Yeah. Have a good day at school. Mm -hmm. Love you. Yeah. I'll see you later, okay? I'll pick you up today. Okay. A lot of family activity here at Tiger Field. <laughs> All right, we're live on Facebook now, so that's good. Yep, I'll let some folks into the waiting room. Okay. Oh, can, is there someone? Oh, there you are, Bruce. <laughs> I was going to say, can someone let him in? But there you are. <laughs> There's the we Bruce got man. Bill coming back. Hi, Lisa. Oh, look, we've got a few. Uh, Lisa, Hi, Lisa and Aaron's on. Bill's coming up. Yeah. There's Bill. Good yeah. morning. Bill Meister. Good morning, COVID campers. <laughs> <laughs> we continue on. And Aaron is here this morning. Yay! Good morning, friends. Good, Good morning. morning. Hi, Aaron. Hi. How's everybody this morning? Plugging along. Doing good. Plugging along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to say, Karen, I love that the still frame on our Facebook Live videos when they post to our page. Uh -huh. are usually your beautiful smiling face, which is That's just so true. great. <laughs> yep. The face of greeters. That's oh, right. Thank you. <laughs> Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, she's so cute. <laughs> and now the press is on for me to smile like that's a big stretch. <laughs> You're the face of greeters. I'm the butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that. I didn't. <laughs> the butt of the joke that well, is yeah, that's right. that be different <laughs> on that note we can go whenever you're ready all right so we are ready and um welcome everybody to greeters thank you for joining us and i want to say hi to our facebook peeps out there so um thanks for being with us today really excited it's a beautiful day and um, we have a great presenter, so um, she's going to share some good information today. So a few little housekeeping um, tidbits for folks on Zoom. Um, if you could remember to please keep yourselves on mute. And then if you have a question, um, you can type it in the chat box and we will, several people will be checking that to answer any questions um, or to see any comments or links on there. And since my agenda did not flow over. I had to take a picture of it. So what else do we have? Let's see. Oh, Bill, do you want to see if there's anyone new or hasn't attended greeters today? Well, you just did that. Did I? Is there anybody new? <laughs> <laughs> Any guests? I'm new. Brenda, can you hear me? Yes. There you go. Yep, with the Sheridan. Well, introduce yourself, sure. Brenda. I'm Brenda Dobert. I'm Director of Sales and Marketing at the Sheridan here in Reading, and I've been here It'll be almost two years in March. And pre previous to that, I was at the Gaia for five years and moved here from Wisconsin. Well, we're glad exactly. to have you here. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. All right, is anyone else new? I'm taking it from you, Bill, sorry. <laughs> I, a little bit of a control issue over here. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so okay i will give you this bill why don't you do some announcements hey announcements we have yeah. announcements all we right do. 21st an annual economic forecast is happening today from 9 a.m to 4 p.m and it's not too late to register we will drop the registration link in the chat boom watch for that all right boom. We will be hosting the 2021 labor law update with O2 Employment Services virtually on Tuesday, February 2nd at 9 a.m. This year, we are happy to share that the event will be free. Registration information will be in the chat. All right. Not Last okay. and not, but not least, please make sure that you are receiving our email communications by going to www.readingchamber.com and subscribing at the bottom of our homepage. <laughs> there it. you have it. Perfect. Thank you, Bill. All right. Totally so, uh, 
Yes, it was something. So why don't we turn it over to Jake and he'll do um, Jake's takes this morning. I'm sure he has a lot to say. Well, we'll, we'll see. I'm going <laughs> to save a lot of it for our, our guest speaker today. Um, but I want to say good morning to everyone and um, thank you for being with us today and making greeters what it is as we just wait to get back in person. Uh, I really appreciate seeing you all though. It, we are having the 21st annual North State Economic Forecast Conference today in virtual format. They had planned to host it at the uh, Sheraton for I think the third year in a row. It's been a really great home for the event. One of the highlights each year is when we hear from Dr. Robert Eiler, who's President Economic Forensic and Analytics. Um, you'll hear the most current and projected trends in the North State labor market, housing, sales, revenue, and more. He does a good job in making charts and numbers uh, kind of jump off the page and tell a really good story around it all too. And I recall last year sitting at one of the tables and he said, it looks like the uh, run in the market is going to continue longer, or at least the economic positive economic direction longer than uh, we had thought, barring any unforeseen <laughs> events or circumstances. And of course, that ended up being just before the COVID-19 pandemic struck. But uh, we're, we are seeing that, um, I think, what do they call it? The K-shaped recovery. And the way that I define that is some businesses are going like that and then other businesses are going like that. So it um, makes the shape of a K on the graph. And we at the chamber are focused on the ones that are not doing as well. And that's where all these business grants have come in and connecting you all with um, amazing, uh, talented and driven people like Trisha Funk, um, which you're gonna hear from her a little bit later. Um, I think beyond all of that, I think it's just about the two things that we can control in our lives, at least in, in my estimation to simplify it, it's sort of like a baseball pitcher. He can control his effort, he can control his attitude, and after that, it's really not up to, to him anymore. Um, but those are the two things I think that we can really uh, focus on every day. Um, the other thing is my friend uh, Scott said he's got a Russian proverb uh, by his desk and he's in a sales position locally. And he said it's something to the effect of you can't chase, don't try to chase two rabbits at the same time because you'll, you'll never catch either one. So it's kind of like, you know, focusing on one thing that you're going to accomplish today that's most important and know that you've at least done that today, whatever it is. Um, so I just decided to throw a little uh, Jake philosophy at you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to answer questions that you might have because I maybe forgot to mention something so that you wanted to hear. <laughs> Let's see. Does anyone have any questions for Jake today? If you catch one rabbit, does it get hairy? <laughs> I think so. Just ask him for a friend. <laughs> oh, Bill. All right. So, um, Jake, thank you for that. And I will actually um, turn it back over to you so you can introduce our guest host today. Okay. I'm, I'm going to cheat and go off the website. Um, okay. but I'll just uh, editorialize a little bit and say we were, we were remarking yesterday at the office about just how hardworking Trisha Funk is and um, you know the success of you just recently in, in fact um, the free information webinars that you held regarding funding opportunities for businesses and how well those were attended but I'll give you some background on Trisha um, not only are you going to hear a lot of uh, great things on um, on the description of who she is and what she's been involved with professionally um, in a moment but also she's been a part of the Chamber of Commerce for many years previous to my arrival and certainly during my early year, first, second year, helping with our business conference and things like that. So Trisha Funk's the director of the Women's Business Center at JEDI. She's got probably more than this now, but 18 years of experience as an entrepreneur in various industries, but her small business background goes well beyond that. She grew up in a family business uh, working alongside her father and grandmother. She spent 10 years as a registered rep and insurance agent before turning her financial business into a consulting and coaching practice that also focused on financial literacy education. 
From 2002 to 17, she also played a cornerstone role in the family used car, truck, and RV dealership. If you've been in Reading for any number of years, you recognize the funk name uh, from that industry. In 2016, she founded Pennies on Purpose, youth financial literacy nonprofit, where she is passionate about ensuring that our youth in the public school system gain the skills and knowledge to make positive financial decisions for their future. Kind of going beyond economics class where you learn about the laws of supply and demand, but maybe not how to balance a checkbook. So with that, please join me in welcoming Trisha Funk. Thanks, Jake. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm super happy to be able to be here when Aaron reached out last week and said, you guys just did this webinar. Can you come and share the same kind of details with our greeters? Um, was, was such an honor. So thank you, Aaron and Jake, for inviting me to kind of help get this information out there that's so important to our community. We, in this kind of, in this second round of, yeah. of crisis, pro, a crisis processing and funding, we uh, actually took the lead at JEDI and represent, started representing our whole California network. So there's 16 WBCs throughout the state of California, women's business centers, who serve men and women. We're a federal program. So they named us a women's business center. And yet, because we're a federal program, we don't discriminate. We don't, we're not allowed, nor do we want to. Um, so Joe is our, you know, we say that we're the sister SBDC. We're the sister agency of the SBDC. So we all work very, very closely, just hand in hand in supporting our community. Um, so I'm going to screen share just really quickly and feel free to throw questions in the chat or interrupt me. Um, Joe can help answer those questions as well as they show up in the chat. Um, we'll just I didn't, I didn't ask permission, Joe, but I'm just going to throw you under the bus too. And you can, I'll, you can tag team with me. Okay. Figured you, I figured you'd be fine with that. So let me start. I'm just going to start from this. Nope. Not that. So the process, a lot of business owners don't understand how, how kind of this process rolls out. So I just want to talk about this really, really quickly when the president, uh, so in December, obviously, of last year, uh, Congress passed this next COVID-19 relief bill. It was signed by the president on the 27th. And then from when it's signed by the president, there's so many different directives that then have to like be rolled out. And all the different entities, so in the, in the bill is like, hey, SBA, you're going to handle this. Hey, this entity, you're going to handle this. Hey, this entity, you're going to handle this. And all the different agencies that then are charged with rolling out these funds then have so many days to be able to make that happen. So, um, you know, there, there becomes like this panic. Everybody hears that there's these, fund, there's these funds that are available, but then there's like this lag time. And it's because the SBA has to design the rules, right? They have to like lay out the application and design all the rules and regulations and stuff like that. And so they had 10 days to be able to issue the guidelines to the banks, which happened at exactly the 10th day, as it always does. So just know in, in other future, you know, as things kind of continue in the future, this is just the process that it happens. So it's generally 10 days to, you know, 10 days to about three weeks before all the different agencies and entities can ramp up and start processing the bill that's passed. So for individuals, workers, household, many of you have already seen uh, economic stimulus check if you had direct deposit and if your income limits were underneath the, um, the amount. The $600 per person, this is a huge question that a lot of people have. Why is it under 17? Why, why is it that these youth are not included unless they're under 17? And it's exactly with the IRS guidelines for earned income credit. So just know that it's tax law. The whole reason why that was done, it wasn't a discrimination thing. It literally is just tax law. Um, you can go onto the IRS website directly to check for those stimulus payments. If you didn't get direct deposit and your income individual is under 75,000 phased out completely at 100,000 or 150,000 married finally jointly phased out at 200,000. Um, the other thing that is that um, was put in that legislation is the additional $300 a week in PUA benefits through March 14th. It is, um, many people have not seen that yet in there if they're currently uh, drawing unemployment because it, although it 
was to begin on 1-4. So it will be retroactive to 1-4. So if someone is, is currently collecting from EDD, then they will see that retroactive. The other thing that is was really important in this bill was the rental assistant for those in arrears. Um, and then the extension of the eviction probation till the end of January. Um, the one thing that's really important about this, um, obviously there's restrictions. Generally, those who make less than 80% medium income that can qualify for these this rental assistance. Um, one person in their household has to have lost a job or they can demonstrate that they're at risk of losing their, of losing their home. But the thing that's really important about this one is that landlords can, in some cases, landlords can apply for this on behalf of their tenants. So if they have a tenant that is really in arrears, they have an apartment building or something like that, um, landlords can actually apply on behalf of their tenants to try to get them caught up. Um, there was additional funding for independent movie theaters, live entertainment venues and cultural institutions. So this is generally, I think um, location, if you have like a physical location, an actual event center or something, not necessarily those that are just in, you know, event production or, or stuff like that. And then the other thing that was really important is uh, additional funding to, to ag um, owners. And the spirit of that legislation really is we have so many of our local farmers and ranchers that, are, that have waste now because there isn't the demand for their supply because with all the restaurants being shut down, they don't have anywhere to ship their product to. Um, so there's some additional funding to help support those those farmers and ranchers that are either have waste that they're having to destroy because of the, the state shutdown. Um, so besides the PUA is, does again, still cover sole prop for the first time in history in this year in 20, well, starting in 2020, there was an extension of unemployment benefits for independent contractors or self-employed individuals. And so that is there. The new round of PPP funding, some we know, of, I know of at least one local bank that is accepting applications, even though they probably can't submit until about next Tuesday. Um, the idle deadline has been extended to the end of this year. So that's the economic injury disaster loan that is there and available, very low interest, um, available to nonprofits as well. And that is um, open now until December 31st of 2021. So we have clients even now that didn't take advantage of the idle loan in the first kind of go around. And they decided are now in this position of, okay, even if I, I think that I'm gonna go and apply for an idle loan now, just to have the cash reserves to know that, okay, whatever happens to get us through those these next three, four months, um, just knowing that I have those cash reserves there to help with, with overhead and operating expenses, um, is just that peace of mind. And then ideally in a year, I can turn around and pay everything back off and have that, but just having the, you know, having the cash available is that, uh, um, is definitely eases the anxiety of still, you know, how much longer are we gonna continue to face this? And then the IDLE Second Chance Advance Program. So um, the IDLE Advance Program was the grants that most employers received $1,000 per employee if they applied for an IDLE loan whether they took the idle loan or not. Um, and originally in the legislation, it was listed at $10,000, up to $10,000 per business. So businesses now have, business owners now have an opportunity to go back and it probably won't open until the 18th um, is, is what we're being told at this point in time, that they have a chance to go in and apply for the additional. So if I only had two employees and um, so I got $2,000, I could potentially go in and apply for the other $8,000 of this idle advance grant. Um, it is restricted to businesses that were in operation prior to January 31st of 2020. So they had to be established prior to that, less than 300 employees, and then is located in a low income community. And so that this link that I have here, and I actually can throw it in the chat. Uh, at some point. Um, this is, you know, if you look up 2020 census mapping, you can very easily see exactly where was, you know, whether your location of your business falls within that, um, what's considered low income. And the easiest way to tell 
from utilizing that census track um, is to just go to percent in um, that are 80% of, no, percent that are living below poverty line. And if that percentage is 20% or more, then you're considered in an area of low income. And then you would have had to also suffer a 30% decrease in revenues over any eight week period of time, okay? So an eight week picture snapshot of 2019 versus an eight week snapshot in 2020. If you have any, any one of those eight week periods that you can show a 30% decline from 2019 over 2020, then that's the, the kind of third piece of of qualification for that idle advance loan. Um, paycheck protection program. I have a question. So with the yeah. EIDL um, second chance advance program, that's that's a forgivable loan, correct? It's not a, so it's not a loan. The advance is the grant portion. Yeah. Okay, it's a grant portion. Can you, uh, does it get subtracted out of some other, it, like if you qualify for another source of revenue? Not at all. No, okay. Nope, not at all. I'm clarifying that, thanks. Yeah. Um, so the new Paycheck Protection Program that is uh, starting to roll out, some CDFIs uh, were able to start processing applications for people that did not receive PPP funding last time. Um, they, um, all of the, all of our local banks and everything will be able to start processing applications for businesses uh, next week. Whether you applied and received PP funding last time, you are still eligible for PPP funding this time. So remember, this is the forgivable loan as long as it's used on appropriate expenses, meaning 60% at least on payroll. You still can choose um, an eight week period to be able to use your funds or a 24 week period to be able to use your funds sole proprietors, self-employed gig workers absolutely qualify for this program as well. Um, and they've expanded some of the additional expenses that, that are eligible for non-payroll costs. So a big part of that is those businesses that have had to accommodate to COVID restrictions. So anything that was spent on making you know, your business compliant or additional PPE supplies or anything like that, as a reminder, we at the WBC still have a ton of free PPE supplies from the governor's office. So any businesses that can utilize those, let me know. And we have masks and sanitizer that we'd love to be able to distribute out to our community still. Um, and then um, one page certification, the, this legislation eliminated, Jake, that's what you were talking about. It eliminated the idle advance from having to be deducted for the, for, from the forgiveness amount. So um, it's there, it's out there, it's um, open, will be mass open all of our, around our community banks and stuff next week. So just check in with your personal bank first is the best way to do it. Your local bank that you already have a relationship with and verify that they're processing applications. Not all banks are, they're not required to do it, right? And this affects their, um, their reserves. So some banks are electing to only process X amount or whatever, so check into your bank personally is the best way to do that. Um, I talked about that, the 25% um, the loss. So this is a restriction that was not on the first round of PPP is that you will choose one quarter so remember with the idle advance, we said it's 30% decrease um, to qualify for that idle advance. For the PPP this round, it's a 25% decrease in any one quarter. So for many businesses, it's not difficult to show a 25% decrease in Q2 of 2019 versus Q2 of 2020. Um, but if there's a different quarter that you wanna use, it's totally up to you. Um, but there has to be a 25% loss in revenue from any one quarter. And then um, you also have to have fully expense that round one funding. So, and appropriately. So if you didn't play by the rules the first time, they won't let you back in the ring for the second time. So that's kind of another one that um, is just part of the restrictions for this current one. I have all these uh, baseball analogies on my mind because I'm at Tiger Field today, um, but I'm going to throw a curveball at you and maybe Joe Radola. Uh, are 
the bank that reached out to us to help the chamber in its application because 501c6 organizations actually are qualified this time um, said you may want to choose to look at your quarter comparison using a cash basis instead of an accrual basis can you explain why that would be an advantage yeah so um your cash basis is based on literally receipts deposits right and so regardless of what was outstanding, you may have had outstanding things that you build an invoice that nobody else was paying. You know, you may have vendors or, or things that were, or contracts that you were under that just stopped paying because they couldn't pay because their doors were closed too. And so that, um, that cash basis would show actual deposit, be more like, here's my bank statement. These are, this is the, what didn't get deposited or, or the 10% that got deposited that was normally there. Joe, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, it's perfect description, as always. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, buddy. Um, then the last one that I have on here uh, that I'll just touch on, the California Business Relief Grant, the first round did end last night at 11.59. We got through it. And I think we have about uh, a week to 10 days to breathe for a second before the second hysteria begins. Um, just know that the SBDC, us at the WBC, we're here to help you. Like, don't freak out alone, freak out with us. So, you know, as you're struggling to get through though, that, as there's tech issues that they had, um, we started, that was announced on uh, the December 23rd. So while we were closing the office for the week between Christmas and New Year's, I, I personally represented our California network and I did office hours every day except for New Year's Day. And our, our one office hour turned into a three hour office hour one day. And so, you know, we're here to answer questions, whether that is one on one, we'll continue to do Q&A sessions and stuff like that, where you can jump on and ask your questions. Uh, know that if you did, if you got your application in by last night, um, we will be starting to be notified as of Friday of those that are selected for this first round. The goal is to, to distribute half of the money in this first round and half of the money in the second round. We'll see if they end up actually doing that in light of the fact that the governor put in his budget about twice as much funding to try to support these grants. Um, obviously, that has to go through legislation. Um, and be approved, but the um, they may choose to more heavily weigh this first round with hopefully some additional funds that will be coming down the pike for the for this grant program. Um, the second round, we have not been notified. We should know today or tomorrow the date of when that second round of, of applications will open. If you're not selected in this first round and you have already gotten your application in, it automatically goes to the second round. There's nothing left for you to do. There's nothing further that you need to worry about or think about or anything like that. Um, it's done, it's in, it's automatically, so it will automatically be in the scoring for that second round. Um, and those are not more heavily rate rated than someone that gets their application in the second round. So don't feel like, oh, I didn't get it in in the first round. And so now it's, now I'm not gonna get, you know, preferential treatment. There is no first come first serve basis to these funds, they are, it's an automatic scoring, um, which is fantastic because that means there's no personal bias, right? Like we all would rather, I personally, I'd rather not know that someone else told a sadder story than I was able to tell, right? Like if, if there's economic impact, there's economic impact and um, you know, it just, it makes it a, a lot more level of, in terms of the playing field. Now there are some things that are weighted a little heavier for um, veterans, for women owned business, if it's more than 51% owned by a disabled veteran or um, also rural, those industries that were most impacted like, um, like restaurants, like movie theaters, like things that, that truly were completely shut down. There's some additional waiting, obviously for some of those industries and businesses, hospitality, um, when everyone stopped being able to travel. So, uh, we, we don't have the exact algorithm, you know, it's like Facebook, they won't show us the actual algorithm, but we can kind of start to tell where the algorithm is a little heavier weighted on. So that's uh, kind of what I have. Um, I'll stop share.
And I'll let Joe answer any questions if there, if anybody has any questions. Hi, Norma. I have to, I have to admit, Tricia, that um, I just spent some time posting on my Facebook page the quote of the morning: "Don't freak out alone. Freak out with us." <laughs> Tricia Funk, Director of Women's Business Center at Jedi. Um, that's that's just perfect for uh, what many of us are feeling. Um, so don't be shy. Please ask questions. I don't have a question, but it's true that there was a tech problem, and I do have uh, time. I made time, which made Max work more for our own business because we have clients that don't even know the difference between nonprofit and profit. They don't even know what apply with a partner means. So, it, you know, that is uh, how basic uh, some business owners can be. And I thank Joe because despite the fact that he is so busy, he made time to answer me, answer my questions and text me a lot. So thank you, Joe, for that. Um, we did get, it's got great feel, feeling when our clients get the, the, the relief that they need. And these are mostly uh, restaurant owners. Thank you, Trisha, for your um, help because I know you were so swamped too with the apply the partner thing. So I said, um, we will be helping you, you know, because they keep on calling the apply the partner was so good. I don't know if people are aware of that, but in the California relief program, it was with apply a partner. And um, it was good that we have local partners here in town. They don't have to get the partners from um, out of town. Thank you. I wanna ask a question uh, on behalf of the group, maybe to either Joe, Tricia, or one of our bankers. Isn't it true that um, depending upon the type of business or is it the type of bank or lending institution that you are, you get to um, submit in a certain order, isn't that true? Yeah, we were under the understanding that certain size banks would, I don't think, I, I hate to use the term eliminated from doing it, but you had to be, a, a, one of the things, uh, those of you who know SCAD, Superior California Economic Development, one of our local uh, micro lenders, uh, Ryan Richardson's a good friend of mine over there. And they said CDCs were going to take these PPP loans. So I called them and said, hey, Ryan, you guys taking the loans? He said, what? <laughs> but anyway, uh, certain CDCs are taking these loan apps for the PPP. But Cornerstone, as usual, I'll tell you what, I'm not supposed to be biased, but I'll tell you, they jumped right on it. Boy, I'll tell you that. They are, they are, they are doing it. So... Congratulations to Cornerstone Community Bank. Get those PPP loan apps on their website for pre-applying. They're, they're ready to go. The big banks, I think, are going to be, I don't think they're going to do them. So. I'll tell you that both um, uh, Cornerstone and Tri-Counties uh, gave me assurances that they're serving customers and non-customers alike. So that's something to recognize as well. Um, for those of you who may not bank with those two institutions, you can still reach out to them. Yeah, and Jake, I just wanted to chime in real quick. It's, it's not necessarily that the bigger banks aren't doing them. Because of the guidelines, they're only allowing smaller banks to submit those first. So we're, we're really held back by, because Tri-Counties Bank is considered one of the bigger banks, we're really held back by those guidelines um, from them, from, S, from the SBA. So, um, but if, if anyone needs any information, please feel free to reach out. Thanks, Lisa. Go ahead, Sheila. Hi, good morning. Well, Trisha, that was a fabulous presentation. Your slides were just amazing. I took some pictures and I took notes. Are they going to be available maybe on the Chamber's website so that other people who are not here with us this morning can actually look at them and see that really good information? I'm, I'm super happy to send that over to Jake and Aaron and they can, if they want to upload it as a file on their Facebook page or any, whatever they want to utilize that to, to distribute. Great, right. thanks. And I didn't see contact information for you on those slides. Maybe they could be added because I know that many of us have businesses that we work with who would really like information about the changes from you and or Joe. So mm -hmm. 
do you both provide basic, I know you said you're the sister organization, which was a cute name, um, but do you basically have the same information or if someone goes to one or the other of you, is that, does it matter? It does not matter. And I just threw my email in the chat. It does not matter. And um, we, and you should go to both of us. Like we, we have different in both entities and agencies. Um, we have different small business experts that 100% of our job is to support you all in running and growing your businesses. So, um, you know, there's, there's experts on from varying degrees and varying niche niches um, with both entities and organizations. So you should definitely reach out to both of the SBDC and the WBC um, and be connected to them. But all of our, you know, our information all rolls down from the same place. So they're not, we, we're not gonna have any proprietary secret stuff that the SBDC doesn't have because we the SBA is who gives us all the rules, so. Thank you. I'll just throw one. I'll just throw one little picky out before we jump off the pool here. Uh, I'm looking forward to today at noon. They're going to have a one-hour webinar on the sheltered venue grant. If I said it right, Trish. Yep. Uh, my daughter is, of course highly involved with stage work here in town. It's also the Foothills art teacher, but Christine is dying, not having a place to go to show her talents. And so Cascade Theater, Riverfront, Axiom, uh, they're gonna probably have a place to go to apply for some help today. And I am so excited about that, personally. Would that include the um, Civic Auditorium as well? It could. It could. We don't have the rules and regs yet. It might do Turtle Bay, maybe be able to uh, Gover Ranch. I'm just oh. thinking of the venues that have been shuttered. No weddings taking place. No events taking place. We're going to find out, I guess, today at noon a little more about that particular portion of the grant. Good point. Well, I, I really appreciate the information that was shared today, and. Uh, one new piece of information other than what Joe just shared, um, which I took note of in Trisha's slides as well, but the, um, the second chance EIDL advance, um, that's, that could be big for many of us on this call. If you're able to show a 30% decrease, is that true quarter to quarter or is it during an eight week period? Eight week an period, 30% eight week period and use your census track. If, you are, uh, if your office is out of your home, you will use your home address. So you still can qualify if you don't have a you know physical brick and mortar location. Um, you use your home address to apply, like with any of these other grants or programs and stuff like that. Your business address is your home address. So, Got it. okay, thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Karen. All right. So um, I was actually just going to open it up for any final questions that um, someone might have for Trish or Jake or Joe. No. Because that was really a great presentation, Trish. I really appreciated it. I know that, I mean, because it's such an um, all-consuming thing right now um, that really it's great information to get out to people. And I really like that idea, Sheila, you saying, um, seeing if we can get that slideshow out to other people because that was a great slideshow. You did a good job. I do have a quick question. Yes, Destiny. Sorry, the, um, the grant that Joe was just talking about that we're gonna learn more about at noon, where do we learn more about it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was also trying to message my boss about it. <laughs> yeah, good idea, yeah, that's right. You guys at the Art Council are very involved. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Trish, Trish and I are gonna have a lot more information on that hopefully after today, and we're gonna get it out ASAP. In fact, I'm personally okay. contacting my contacts. Uh, uh, Daryl uh, over at Riverfront is gonna get a call uh like at 12 you know 104 after i get in on the, <laughs> you know the, we have this beautiful venues cascade theater come on yeah. it is a jewel and uh uh the poor people haven't been able to work and so uh, anyway and we had to cancel a lot of weddings at old city hall last year too so yeah same thing yeah uh, and concerts uh, huh? yeah <laughs> yeah Dusty, i would just say follow like Follow Facebook pages, 
uh, for the Women's Business Center and the SBDC, um, or just put a call in and say, I want to, I want a phone call, you know, can we have a phone call tomorrow to have that, to just do a quick rundown of the actual facts and information that we get. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, um, again, thank you for that, everybody. Um, great information and good questions. And so now I think we're going to go on to personal introductions. And Bill, um, who are you? I'm Bill. Thanks for asking. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You? Where are you from? I'm with U.S. Lending. How about you? Who are you with? I am Karen Simmons with Cornerstone Community Bank. Woo! Go Cornerstone. Thank you. All right, Brenda, the way this works is you get to introduce yourself again. It's up to you. Unmute yourself. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm Brenda Dobert with the Sheridan here in Reading. Um, I did want to let you know that Mosaic just introduced a new menu, dinner menu, um, this past Saturday. And we also are now open for brunch Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 3. And we do outdoor seating only. Yum. Sheila, you're up. Yes, good morning again. Sheila Hurst, Founder Square Shopping Center in downtown Reading. Sarah. Hi everyone, good morning, happy Thursday. I am Sarah Noland and I am the business service representative here at Smart in Shasta County. Larry. Good morning everyone, Larry Ramsey, IRG Marketing. Uh, website design, mobile apps, social media, all that fun mobile marketing stuff. Destiny. Destiny. Still muted. I do that every week. <laughs> Destiny with Shasta County Arts Council at the Old City Hall. Um, just a reminder, if you do have any local virtual events, please email them to me so I get them in our weekly newsletter. Um, and I put that. Joe. Joe, you're up. Joe Rodola, Small Business Development Center, and Joe Rodola's Debt Consulting. Don't forget. How's the time, by the way, January, to check and make sure if you don't already do so, what your score is personally, and of course, maybe a time to check your credit report on annualcreditreport.com. If anybody was going to steal identity, holidays is the time to do it, right? So be careful, be out there, and I'll be happy to help you. Haley. Good morning, everybody. I'm Haley, and I am at the chamber. Um, I'm the operations assistant here. Have a good day. Jason. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Jason with Giles Block and Security, and of course, also with Victory Arms, where we're uh, doing usually CCW classes the third weekend of every month. This weekend, though, it is going to be on the fourth weekend. If anyone's interested in uh, updating or getting their new CCW class, let me know. Bruce. Good morning, everybody. Bruce Preston with Guild Mortgage. Wishing everyone a great day. Great presentation, by the way, Tricia. Thank you. Amber. <clears throat> Amber Yurton with the Employment Development Department. Max and Norma. <clears throat> morning, greeters. Maximilian Malari with World Financial Group, Life and Health Agent. And Nora Malari, I did not thank the Reading Chamber of Commerce. Haley, thank you for helping me that time when I called you too. So I know that all of you work with Joe and Trish. Thank you, Jake. And thank you, Aaron. Banda. Good morning, Vanda. Cutting out, Wanda. Oh, I think we lost Wanda. All right. Ayla. Hello, Ayla Tucker with Local Public Affairs for PG&E. Happy New Year. Lisa. 
Good morning, everyone. It's kind of hard to be so loud on Zoom, but I am your loud and proud line, Lisa Grimmett, Treasury Management Officer at Tri-Counties Bank. And thank you, Tricia, for the great presentation. Really, really good information. Erin. Good morning, everybody. My name is Erin. I am the Director of Marketing and Membership at the Chamber. You guys all know me. Um, Jake had to jump off and head over to the Economic Forecast Conference, so he wishes you all a good day. Thank you so much for being with, with us, Tricia. That was excellent, and you've just done such an amazing job at staying in the know for all of our businesses, and, and you as well, Joe. We're just so thankful for both of you, so thank you. Vonda, let's try again. Good morning, everybody. Vonda Hudson with A Beautiful View. If you know anybody looking to get their windows cleaned, we have a really great special right now. So give me a call. If you want your windows to shine like new, call A Beautiful View. Zach. Hey, Zach Valenzuela with Commerce Home Mortgage. Thanks, Bill. Melissa. Good morning, everyone. Melissa with the Gaia Hotel and Spa. Have a great day. Tricia, I think you're last but not least. All right, I'm Tricia Funk, director of the WBC at Jedi, um, but also the executive director of Pennies on Purpose, youth financial literacy nonprofit, um, and proud sponsor of Lemonade Day Reading, that is also youth entrepreneurial training for our little ones. Our junior high and high school curriculum is online now. Um, and I do want to say that we are looking for a couple people that are willing to I would be interested in serving on our Lemon Council. So couple month commitment, couple meetings to help support our young entrepreneurs. Is the Lemon uh, Lemonade Day still on? It is on for 2021. So it'll be in June. All of the curriculum's totally free to anyone that wants their kiddo or their classroom or their youth organization to participate. Nice. That's a great thing. Okay, I th did I miss anybody? I think you got everybody. All right, Karen, back to you. All righty, thank you. Um, Aaron, do we have, um, are we sharing with Karen this morning? Nope, I don't have anything else, but we do have some giveaways. Oh, perfect, that's what I was just going to ask. Okay, so take it away with the giveaways. Okay, so anyone else that has a giveaway, just uh, let me know in the chat, but we have a few books here from um, Destiny with All Hands on Books. So our first book is, Alfie Onion, The Adventures of Alfie Onion. And that is going to, that is going to Amber Yearton. So if you have any kiddos in your life to, none at all? Oh, oh okay. no, I don't have any grandkids and my son is 31. So it, well, and, no. Surely. I'm to get busy. I, I have. <laughs> Okay, second book is My Daddy is a Hero. So that looks very cute. And that is going to number 11. And that is Bruce Preston. Right on, Bruce. So hey, Bruce, uh, here you go. I want to I wanna donate that to someone else because, again, I don't have any children to give that to. Okay, anybody have kiddos that would like Bruce, to? Bruce, you get busy. <laughs> you guys i don't this is a world i know nothing about i'm surrounded in kids all the time so i can i can gift this for you bruce i'll help you out donate it to you then erin mine <laughs> i donate to you you can have that and give that to all the kids that you've got then <laughs> okay, I'm not technically allowed to be a part of the drawing, but I think this is kind of like a, a, a default. So, yes. um, so thank you, Destiny, at All Hands on Books. And yes. last but not least, uh, we have The Curious Case of the Missing Mammoth. These books are really cute, you guys. So um, I, I, I'm a book lover, a kid's book lover. So I, I appreciate this. And that is going to... Um, Isla Tucker. So Isla, hopefully you have someone maybe that you can uh, give this to or, or maybe kiddos of your own. 
Yeah, I think I have some some friends with kids that would enjoy that. Awesome. Yay. Well, it'll be here at the chamber for you. So if you have the opportunity to swing by um, anytime, we'll keep it here for you. And it'll be great to meet you in person as well. Yeah, great. So. Thank you. Thank you, Destiny. Okay, I think that's all we've got today. All right, thank you, Erin. And so we will wrap it up. And I wanna thank everybody uh, for, for being with us. Hi, all our Facebook peeps. Thank you for joining us today. And um, I look forward to seeing y'all next week. Have a wonderful and pleasant week. Thanks, See Trish. Bye. Hasta you. Luigi. Hasta luego. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 <clears throat>